Scenes of serenity after the chaos of conflict. People arriving from Israel at this shelter on the banks of Hungary's Lake Balaton say it's a godsend. It's, it's a miracle. Inside, sounds of Jewish prayer fill an improvised synagogue. Children sing songs in Hebrew. And kitchen staff cook kosher food for 200 residents. Many of them are mothers who fled to Hungary after the Hamas attacks. It was very afraid for my children to hear the booms and it was crazy. I live uh, next to the Lebanon border. They were afraid that what Hamas did, they're going to do to us. So we were evacuated. She decided to come here to Hungary, which has one of the largest Jewish populations in Central and Eastern Europe. Locals transformed this once abandoned resort into a refugee centre after Russia's war began last year. For some of the new residents, seeking refuge is nothing new. Mendel Moskovitz escaped eastern Ukraine with his family last year and found a new home in southern Israel, only to find himself faced with war on his doorstep once again last month, a feeling all too familiar. Throughout history, uh, Jews have been uh, evacuated, Jews have been uh, expelled from their home countries many, many, many times over. And unfortunately, uh, there's a famous saying that history repeats itself. Uh, we would l love to believe that the world is a better place uh, than it used to be. But unfortunately, we do see, we are seeing a big rise in anti-Semitism right now all over the world. Authorities offer the site to the associations of Hungarian and Ukrainian Jewish communities rent-free and it's closely guarded. But Hungary's anti-migrant rhetoric hasn't changed. People here already had the right to travel to the country as Ukrainian or Israeli nationals. The right-wing government in Budapest has faced accusations of fueling divisions and dealing in anti-Semitic tropes in the past. But it insists it has a zero-tolerance policy on anti-Semitism. In early October, Prime Minister Viktor Orban banned all protests in solidarity with Palestinians, branding them as pro-terror. That's something Rabbi Shlomo Kovesh believes helps create a sense of safety. Yes, I think demonstrations of such sort should be banned. Hungary has uh, in its uh, society some level of anti-Semitic attitudes, just like uh, other, unfortunately, just like uh, most societies in the world. But there's almost no physical uh, attacks on Jewish institutions, uh, or, or, or no physical atrocities. But while some feel secure, others feel silenced. This small memorial outside the Palestinian mission is the only place Gaza-born accountant Ramadan Megari can come to voice his grief and anger. It's really sad that you can't speak on what is in your heart or express your emotions after the tragic events that we have in the last few days. For Ramadan, the tragedy is personal. At his apartment, he shows us photos of loved ones lost after his family home was hit amid Israel's massive bombardment of Gaza. I lost my father, my mother, and my sister, my grandpa. How many people in total did you lose? 22 from my first degree uh, family. Ah, oh, yeah, it's really sad to to see the pictures and to know that you were not going to see them in reality more. With the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza growing more dire daily, Ramadan has reconciled himself to just one hope. Just to continue the life with the remaining of what I have. Not to lose, not to have bigger loss. Back at Lake Balaton, residents turn to faith when division and suffering make it hard to see any way ahead. We hope and pray every day that this war will end. Uh, people don't want this war. Uh, people want to live in peace, have families, have friends. At the lakeside, the fog of war feels a million miles away. With their future uncertain, Mendel knows his family is lucky to have found refuge here for now. Because for so many more, safety is still out of reach.